So anyway, the concept of an average guy is patently absurd. There's too much differential in the herd. Just look at Bush and Cheney, and then look at you and me. It's like comparing Shakespeare to reality TV. <laughs> is this the life that we really want? Being murdered by these clowns? Our children crushed in rubble? Are we deafened by the sound of media mouths all moving in apparent unity, spewing out the mantra of the free? Free to plan the Neoland, safe in their bomb-proof lairs, free to send our sons to war, our sons, of course, not theirs, free to burn and pillage to fill the family vault, free to claim it's doggy dog and really not their fault. Fear drives the mills of modern man. Fear keeps us all in line. Fear of all those foreigners, fear of all their crimes. Is this the life we really want? It surely must be so, for this is a democracy and what we all say goes. We all say, kill Bin Laden, kill Saddam Hussein, kill anyone collateral who might get in the way, kill all the dogs and shopkeepers, kill all the coppersmiths, kill everyone who chooses to be on the evil list, kill everyone who doesn't want to be our acolyte, kill everyone who disagrees that what we say is right. It's going to cost us trillions, Already has, in fact, but no price is too heavy to keep the faith intact. Because we believe in freedom, human rights for everyone. Well, everyone, that is, except the ones we need to bomb. And if some of them are children and seem a bit forlorn, it's not our, our fault. They should have chosen somewhere different to be born. Anyway, I'm sure they'll all agree it's a success when we've tidied all the insurgents and tidied up the mess. Even though they may be crippled or rotting underground, they'll be happy when democracy is the only game in town. They can help to build our bases, they can wash, wash our fancy cars, they can service all our calm needs in pickup joints and bars. Against their religion, <coughs> their religion's wrong. I'm sure they'll get the hang of it, catch on before too long. Then they can all watch baseball, they can build a Disneyland, eat pizza at McDonald's, drink bourbon, start a band. I know, I know, no alcohol. The towel heads don't drink. But fuck, they'll soon get used to it. We'll have to have a think. I digress, I'm sorry. What was my train of thought? Oh yes, now I remember. Is this what we all ought to be devoting our resources to, to spread this rotten creed, teaching their dead children avarice? Was it Truman Capote who famously wrote, it's not enough that I succeed, I need others to fail? Is this the life we really want? To set ourselves at odds with every other species, not to mention other gods? I don't think so. In general, my experience has been that ordinary Americans, when asked to cite their dream, conjure up an existence where they can raise their kids without the chafe blowing other people's kids to bits. Is it my imagination? Is it too much to suggest that their leaders over there and our leaders in the West are driven not by trying to achieve peace in our time, but by something else, by something altogether less sublime? Call me a cynic, but it some, sometimes seems to me that some of them are more attached to power than to peace. Just supposing for a moment that they're in it for the cash that they're looking out for number one, building up their stash. What better way to divert the attentions of the poor than an axis of evil and a good old fashioned war? It's economics 101, as every schoolboy knows. War is good for business and diverts us from our words. It's so unpatriotic to complain about our lot when our brave boys are out there in the desert getting shot. Imagine if the money that we're spending on the war was used instead to rebuild dikes and help rehouse the poor, to research cures for cancer and fund institutes, to delve into ways of helping people less well off than ourselves, to secure our docks and airports and power stations, to prevent the disaffected in our own and other nations from expressing their attachment to some vengeful deity in self-immolation, immolating you and me. Or is it power that gets them, being able to decide how to divvy up the cake, who should live, who should die? 
to have at their disposal those sexy tanks and planes got you. No, I got you first, reliving boyhood games. Why don't we just stop them? Why don't we get tough, take to the streets in millions, say enough is enough? Why? Why? It's obvious because actually we, that's you and me, that's all of us, because actually we, all the blacks and all the whites, Chicanos, Asians, every type of ethnic group, even folks from Guadalupe, the old, the young, the toothless hags, the supermodels, actors, fags, football stars, men in bars, washerwomen, tailors, tarts, grannies, grandpas, uncles, aunts, friends, relations, homeless tramps, clerics, truckers, cleaners, ants. Maybe not ants. Because it's true that ants don't have enough IQ to differentiate between the pain that other people feel and well, for instance, cutting leaves or crawling across windowsills in search of open treacle tins. So like the ants, are we just dumb? Is that why we don't feel or see? Or are we all just numbed out on reality TV? So every time, every time, the roadside mine, the guided bomb, the ricochet, the gatling gun, the tomahawk, the phantom, mirage, RF squawk, the IED, the false hello, the cluster bomb with fries to go. Every time, the curtain falls on some forgotten foreign life. Rest assured it is because we did nothing to prevent our monsters, dedicated as they are not to protection of the weak, not to democracy, that we did nothing to prevent their headlong dash to maximize the bottom line. So what if anything to do? We'll understand that every day, in many small but central ways, we get to choose enslavement to the bottom line with all that, that implies. Dog eat dog, God eat God. Did I mention freedom fries? Anyway, we get to choose, or so we're all led to believe. We'll now, in 2008, election year, who knows? It may well be too late, but just suppose, just suppose if we all vote, that we can start to bridge the gap between what we all have become and what we all just might have been. The gap between the blind and blinkered, great unwashed, the laughing stock, the butt of universal scorn and enmity and wrath and grace and pride. That some of them, sorry, and leadership and light and beacons shining in the West, admired by both the old world and the third. Safe haven for the lauded claims in constitutions written fair on parchment years ago when equality, fraternity, and liberty were rocks cold bedded in an earth emerging from a darker age. I do believe that we can spread our wings, take flight, renounce the darkness of the marketplace, reach out across the iron dogs, abyss, embrace our longing to be kinder, I, and have more fun and garnish less the money lenders' nests, and touch and sing and breathe in relish of our new unfettered selves. Embrace the law in that we all agree that standard issue kicking in our door, tapping phones, rendition, torture, waterboarding and the rest, the random shooting down on London's underground of someone's nephew from Brazil. However scared the powers that be are alien to our beliefs, and so should be confined to memories of Hitler's Reich and, of course, to Uncle Joe's Gulag archipelagos. So are we babies that we need to be protected, the left unfettered thrashing we might hurt ourselves, that they, the chains, Putins, Bushes, Blairs, and all their spawn and all their heirs, in all their ruinous, bankrupt, fearful crap that Woo! they somehow should have the power to keep us at each other's throats, impotent, straight-jacketed, 
squabbling over dimes and groats, like infants in our swaddling clothes. Fuck them. Yeah! <laughs> They've had their time. A new day dawns, and we will not be swaddled in their grime. <laughs> <laughs>